Welcome back. In the last video, we were able to install Java, set up Java on our machines. We were also able to set up Maven on our local machine. We we're able to run our first Maven on command line. But today what we want to do is we want to use an IDE, pretty much a software that is used to write our program, to write our first Java and Maven application. But before we get into it, the first question will probably be, do you even understand what Java is all about? Do you understand the concept of Java? Let us do a quick deep dive into what Java is all about. Java is an high-level object-oriented programming language. And what a programming language does is it tells your machines what to do when you just write, maybe in plain English, for example, right? Now, there are two keywords in there I want us to understand. And the first one is the word high level, right? And the second word there is object oriented programming, O O P. Okay. Let's pick the first one, right? When you say Java is high level language, it simply means it is relatable to everyday language. It is readable. You could understand it. Um, it's different from the O's and ones, the binary numbers. So you, you could read this and understand it. So for example, you have, um, maybe you have a code that says public void, right? Um, public void. You already understand what public is and you know what void is. It is readable, you could understand it, right? So that's what I mean by Java is high level language. Now, when you say Java, what comes the concept of OOP? What does it mean? OOP means object oriented programming. It has the full meaning of it. And it simply means you can relate Java applications to an object or your day to day object. Let's do, let's, let's relate it to a car, for example, right? Let's just relate it to a car. Before you create a car, before a car is created, either a toy car, before it's created, they have a blueprint for creating what the car would look like. And then we know that all cars have a lot of things in common, but let's just take three of them. We know that a car has, all cars, irrespective of the model and make, has steering wheel, all right? And then we know that all cars, irrespective, has doors. And then we know they have engines, right? All right. Now, the type of engines, we don't know, right? Either electric or gas engines. It doesn't really matter here. But we know they have this and they have doors. Let's take one more, just one more, right? They have doors. Okay. So we have four of this, right? When you look at this blueprint, and let's, let's call it a class. That blueprint is called a class. And what a class does is for here is holding this blueprint, right? When you now use this blueprint to create something, you create a car. It means you created an object, okay? So if you remember, I said it is relatable to an everyday life, an object. So a class and then an object is created from a class, all right? That is straightforward. Now, there are different concepts in object-oriented programming that I want us to understand. And we would also be using the analogy of a car. And one of them, we have four of them, apparently. We have um, polymorphism, big, big English, I guess, polymorphism, all right? Then we have inheritance, we have encapsulation, and then we have abstraction, all right? Let's take them one by one. Polymorphism simply means taking many forms, right? So we'll take an example of a car. A car could have a lot of forms. You could have um, a speed car, you could have um, an SUV, you could have um, a police car, right? Depending on how fast they drive or how slow they drive. They drive normally, they drive fast. Or they... A class can take pretty much different forms. Let's take, for example, a car could start using a key. It would also start using remote and it could also start using a button, right? So, in Java, you could have a class 
that has a, sim a single name but have different things that they do and receive different parameters, for example, right? In polymorphism, you have two things. You have the overriding and overloading. I have the card that, ha that starts with a button. I have the card that starts with a key and I have the card that starts with a remote. So it's pretty much start. All it does is start is the same thing, but does different things, right? That is overloading in polymorphism, not in Java. Now, when you now talk about overriding, method overriding, it simply means that, okay, I have a particular car, but I want to override what that car does. So for example, I have an SUV, but I want to turn that SUV to a sport car. What do I need to do? There are certain things I could do, for example, I could change the engine. I could change a lot of things from it, which means I'm overriding the original use of that car, right? That is under polymorphism. So you have method overloading and overriding, all right? Now, the next thing is the inheritance, right? Again, the blueprint of the door, the wheels, and the steering wheels, right? But I am now creating an SUV, which is different from a sedan, right? Sedan has four doors, right? An SUV has four doors, right? Some sedan has two doors. It doesn't really matter. But I'm now taking the doors. I'm taking the wheels and I'm taking it and putting it in an SUV. It simply means an SUV is inheriting the same blueprint from a car. Inheritance in Java printing point means using an object or um, maybe a class or maybe a method, sorry, a method from another class. Pretty much just inheriting the properties of that particular object on inheriting the properties of that particular blueprint, right? Then the next one is encapsulation. You could see a car, right? But you know that a car has an engine, but you cannot see the engine. So it's pretty much hiding some things under the hood. You have a car, but you know the car has an engine, but you don't know if the car has a V8 engine or a V4 engine, right? So encapsulation pretty much means hiding certain things, right? Which is straightforward. I hope that is straightforward. If you have any questions, please leave a comment in the comment section and I would attend to them. Then when you now talk about abstraction, you only have a drawing of a car. Or maybe you have a car, you're just seeing the front of a car. You don't know what kind of, what brand and model of that car is. It's just an abstract to you. But you know that the car has steering, it has a door, maybe it has a hood, right? You only, you only know what it does because you're thinking about it abstractly in your head. But what you have is just a drawing of that car. So these four concept, concepts, the polymorphism, the inheritance, the encapsulation and the abstraction, right? These four concepts are the concept of the object-oriented program. Now, in the next class, we will be talking about all well, the basic things in Java. Um, for example, the primitive types, the digital types, control flows like for loop, if, and all those things. Those are the basics. And from there, we will move on to more complex stuff. But for today, I just hope I'm, I've been able to do justice to explaining the, a little bit basic of Java, all right? So now let's jump right in, into installing and writing your first Java and Maven application, all right? To install IntelliJ, which is the ID we'll be using here. There are other IDs too. You have the Eclipse and you have um, Visual Studio Code and different ones, right, that you could use. But for the purpose of this course and this video, we'll be using IntelliJ. We'll be installing IntelliJ and writing our first code in IntelliJ. And don't forget, we'll also be using Maven as our view tool, right? So to do that, just go to Google and type in IntelliJ in your Google. It's going to show you the JetBrains. That's what we need. Then click on the download. And then um, for the IntelliJ, they have different versions, right? The Ultimate and the Community version. Um, the Ultimate is I think you get a seven day trial, uh, but for the community version, I think the community version is free, totally free. And just click on the download. I already have it downloaded, all right? And I'm just gonna run this pretty much. Uh, let me just run it. It probably will tell you to type in your password or maybe just click on the yes, all right? It's popping up, okay. It's trying to install. And then it's telling me to allow yes i'm just gonna click the yes button and then from there it's click on the next and next and then i want to install or create all this you could do 
Um, you could add it to add the beam part to your path. You could do all sorts of things. But one thing I want us to understand in Java is the Java code. Our Java code always ends in .java, right? So we want to associate it with .java. Um, if you have Kotlin, if you have, we are going to use pom, but it's not going to be .pom, but it's going to be .pom.xml. So don't get it mixed up, all right? Um, I explained that in our last class, which is for the Navy. All right. Um, I think I'm just going to leave all this. If you want to create um, a shortcut, you can just click on the create a shortcut, but I don't need it for now. All right. Let's click on next. And then we want to install, all right? All right. It's done installing, all right? So let's just run, let's run the IntelliJ Community Edition. And it should come up now. Yeah, there you go. And then you want to confirm all this and you click on the continue. You want to send anonymous statistics. That's fine. If you don't, then you don't. All right. So then as soon as it's installed, this is the first thing you see. All right. So it asks you to either create a new project, open a new project or get from a repository. Now, what is a repository? Repositories where codes are uh, saved, right? We will get into that in the later videos, right? But these are the three options you have. And then you also have some other options here, which is the customization. If I want to change it to a light version, I could do that. If I want to change it to just light edit, um, whatever one you want, high contrast, whatever one you want, Dracula. But for me, let's just do a light version. Um, so we, uh, we see what we're doing properly. And then there are different plugins you could use with this. You see, you could have um, AWS Toolkit, you have the JetBrains, you have a lot of plugins. All right, but let's, what we want to do is just create our first project, right? Just click click on the new project. You can name our project, whatever we want to name it. Just let's name this test project for now, right? Good, all right. We already installed Maybe, right, on our computer. Now, we want to use Maybe. As I said in our previous classes, right, there are other build tools we could use. We could use Maven, we could use Gradle, we could use Ant, right? But for this course, we'll be using Maven specifically, right? So let's build our first Maven um, project. Now, you also have a lot of programming language here, which is, you have Kotlin, you have Groovy, um, but what we just want to do, we have JavaFX, and of course, you could just generate uh, Maven archetypes. You could generate a Spring Boot, you could do a lot of things, but what we are what we are focusing on today is creating a Java and a Maven application, all right? And let's do an advance, right? In the previous class, I also mentioned about group ID and artifact ID, all right? I said group ID is unique to you for your example, your company, and artifact ID is the name of the project or the name of the application you're trying to write, all right? So for this, we're just going to do, or I'm going to change it to come up on it. You can change it to whatever you want, um, your company name, and then we just want to name it a test project, right? Awesome. So we can create this project, right? Because we already selected the Maven. We're not creating a Git repository yet because we're not pushing it into a, a repository yet, all right? We'll get into that in the later videos. Now we just want to create And there you go. You've succeeded in creating your first application. But let's take, let's just do a little bit of understanding of what this has created, right? Okay. Now, if you take a look at what this has created, in the previous class, I mentioned directory structures that Maven actually follows. And I said that you'd see the source, the main, right? The test. In, under the main, you'd see the Java and you see the resources. This, is the standard structure of a Maven project, right? Now, I also said the resources holds pretty much most, most times the assets, and the assets will probably be maybe um, audios, um, maybe if you have audios or maybe you have files that you're trying to hold. So the assets hold those uh, items, all right? All right, so in the Java, you have something here, which is the main. The main, in every Java application, right? the main this main class must be there or else your java application would not run right so this is the main class for now and in the main class we have a for loop and then we have just an hello and welcome string um let's just take out this for loop uh, we'll get to the for loop 
And then all we want to do is just make sure that we see when we run our application, we are able to see this hello and welcome, right? Now, let's go back to what the pom.xml is. The pom.xml in the last class I explained it is honed by specifically to Maven. And what it does is it, this is what tells Maven what to bring. For example, in the last class, I said, okay, if you need dependencies to read maybe CSV file, you go to the Maven repository and then you, you give, maybe you already know what you want to use. Then you just come here and then put in the tags of the dependencies, right? If you look, you have already the tags for the dependencies. You could just put in the dependencies here and then you're good to go. And you're, what you're doing is you're telling Maven that I need this particular report, I mean, jar or this particular dependency in my project and Maven will bring it to you. But let's do a little bit of a deep dive into this. Um, the first thing here, here is if you remember, I put in my group ID and I put in my artifact ID, and this is the version of my application. This is straightforward, right? Um, group ID is specific to you. Artifact ID is the name of your project, right? We can have a lot of test projects, but we, I'm not sure we have a lot of this or in it, right? All right. And then we have the versions. And then you also have the Maven compilers. This is the Maven compiler. This is what actually helps us to compile our pro project and create our project into jars and, and the likes. Now, let us run this. I'm expecting to see hello and welcome, which should be, right? Let's run this and see what we have. Okay. Good. We have successfully created our first project. Congrats. So in the next class, we will be talking about um, the primitive data types. We'll also be talking about how we can actually create different things like the jar or the wall file as the case may be. Once again, I'm super, super thrilled um, to be building excellence with you on this journey. Please comment in the comment section, subscribe, like, and most importantly, share with your friend. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.